as we're preparing for Sukkot 5783 or 2022, we're thinking about Black Panther because Marvel has just announced the release date of their new Wakanda Forever. It turns out Sukkot and Black Panther have more in common than you might think. We realized that two years ago when we recorded episode four. This is Jews Talk Racial Justice with April and Tracy, a weekly show hosted by April Baskin and Tracy Guy Decker. In a complex world, change takes courage. Wholehearted relationships can keep us accountable. Hi, Tracy. Hey, how's it going, April? Pretty great. Um, There's so much happening and um, I'm so glad that we have this partnership. So we're still in the midst of the sacred high holy day season. And um, you mentioned before we started recording that you have a few great ideas about what we might possibly talk about on Sukkot. And my overall thought is that I think it's worth everyone hearing your sort of full overview of possibilities, and then we'll choose one specifically for this episode, and then we'll find other ways of of infusing this partially Sukkot-inspired wisdom through future episodes. How does that sound as a game plan? That sounds amazing. Amazing. Okay, great. Thank you for letting me share some of the things that I'm thinking about, about Sukkot. So, and there's a lot. So, um, (laughs) I know Sukkot is, it's just such a, it's such a rich holiday as they all are. Come on, let's face it. Um, so Sukkot in particular, this Sukkot in the calendar, in the Gregorian calendar year, 2020, when I was younger, I remember sort of saying like, why do we even have this holiday? Why do we celebrate the time when we were in the wilderness? Like that was kind of a crappy time. Why would we remember it? And as I got older, Mm -hmm. I realized that actually that time in the wilderness, gratitude is even more important. It's even more important when things are challenging to Ooh, really can focus I just, on gratitude. Can and I just so say this year? Can I just say you just you just said a word? You just you just that was like a lot of wisdom and Torah right there. But please please continue. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I appreciate your appreciation. It, it right now for me focusing on gratitude. Um, I mean, it's the only way. It, it, it's the only way that allows me to keep going because there's just so it's so heavy right now. Everything is so heavy as we start off 5781. And so Sukkot reminding us that at the beginning of this new year is important. Another thing for me um, with Chadwick Boseman passing away, um, who played T'Challa in in Black Panther, for those of you who don't recognize his actor name, um, I've been thinking about Black Panther a lot. And so I shared it with my mom and I shared it with my sister after he passed. And um and what connected for me about Sukkot and Black Panther, follow me for a second, is um, when we invite visitors, when we invite visitors into our sukkah, the ushpizim, the metaphorical visitors, who are um, can be anyone, right? They can be sort of figures from our memory, from Torah, from our our ancestors. So I think I've been thinking about the importance of of ancestors and the wisdom that they share, but also from watching Black Panther the fact that we are still in conversation with them, like Black Panther, T'Challa says to T'Chaka on the ancestral plane, you were wrong. And, and I, need to, I need to forge a different path. And, and so when I sort of mash up Black Panther with Sukkot, it's an opportunity to both learn from and be in conversation and push back on ancestors, which feels so empowering. Mm. And um, not to not to stomp on anything, but to just have that genuine conversation to say, I want to learn from your mistakes. Um, So that's another thing that feels really powerful to me about Sukkot. And the third thing that we talked about that I think you've written about a little bit is um, the the wave offering, the actual, like the, the plants that we hold in our hands and we shake in different directions and up and down and just the sheer embodiment of that. I think especially in the 21st century, especially now when our only communication with so many people is virtual, we sort of have divorced the spirit, the intellect, the body, and they're not divorced. You know, they are fully, fully integrated and we show up at our best when we remember that. Um, I recently shared with you, April, that I borrow from Marsha Falk's Book of Blessing after I exercise. And I say, 
out loud, Tizkor nafshi et kirushat haguf, my spirit remembers the holiness of the body. And so that's another thing that I feel like Sukkot can bring to us. So those are all of my seeds that are sprouting a little bit around Sukkot. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I, often so much of what you say resonates with me. And I just want to name that it's awkward that because we're over on Zoom and especially, especially when, we're, when we're recording that like the mm-hmm, like the like my embodied resonance with what you have to say at times I'm quiet and I'm just like, oh, I want to say this, but I don't want it to cut off the valuable words that you're saying. <laughs> so, you know, at some point maybe we'll identify a different platform that allows for that piece or maybe Zoom will get their technology caught up. Oh, there's so much richness and goodness in what you said. I think I need to explicitly say, knowing that once this is live, it will have been about a month since um, Chadwick's uh, tragic passing. I opted at least for the time being not to post about it publicly. Um, but I'm so sad. Um, I really loved him as a person a lot. He had mensch like qualities to me. Like he just seemed like I always adored him. I loved that he seemed, and he wasn't overly righteous either. Like he was so, he seemed just like a regular guy, like who, who kept his humanity in the face of, or in being surrounded by stardom that he just seemed like your neighbor next door, who, if there was a fire or a problem or you were in need would be there in a heartbeat. Um, And so separate from the broader loss for our, world around the role that he played. I also just feel for the people who were fortunate enough to know him because I know how much he impacted me and in, in who, in addition to his role, but the, the integrity and warmth and love that he embodied. So I, you know, especially as like a black woman, I just wanted to name that. I love using the hashtag, a saying that comes out of a anti-oppressive community I'm a part of. Um, They have a shirt with Pac-Man that's silly. It's a black shirt with yellow lettering. I have one for my dad. You might've seen it on a, a Facebook photo that says black men are good. And both my father and Chadwick, I just think, I think Chadwick just embodied that goodness to its fullest extent. And he was cute. Um, <laughs> uh, when I think about the fact that he was already suffering from the cancer when he recorded um, Black Panther, I it just blows my mind, um, the, the strength and the courage. The strength and the courage, and it actually raises, I know we have to get back to Sukkot, <laughs> But like it raises a few different things for me that I've seen a little bit about, but I mean, it was his choice. And so I respect that. And he gave the world so many gifts in his roles, but it also as a daughter and as a family member to people who have dealt with illness. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting okay, that I did bring up my father. It's it's not a coincidence because I was thinking about him because it was like, why would he do that? But I remember when my father was um, on chemo, he worked overtime um, mm-hmm. when he was on staff at Accenture to ensure that he got a promotion and a raise so that when he went on permanent disability, our family would be cared for for the foreseeable future. And it still is just like, me from my visionary place, from my place where I like to focus on things I want. I just dream of a world where men and women don't have to do that and where there are ways where there are enough people and that, that those beautiful visions or those things can be and needs can be met and that they have the space they need to just properly heal. Um, yeah. You know, and and who knows? with his cancer, if more time 
And I could also see like, he reminds me of my mom and I'm sure other folks in, in the photos when he was doing all of that, because there's also, that can also be very helpful in terms of soothing your own suffering by being of service. Right. Anyway, so thank you for um, naming that. Um, I would say may his memory be a blessing, but I just want to, you know, abracadabra just say into being that his memory will always be a blessing. Um, he's his left life such an was. yeah. He's just left such an indelible mark on so many, um, and so may that memory be cherished. And leveraged I mean. for thank you for black and collective liberation and love. <sighs> Can you hear that soon? So Sukkot and the wilderness. I think I might just like the easiest thing is to start off the top. And I think it's good because it it fits it's that can weave into what we're looking at right now in terms of our world, in terms of being in a wilderness around the pandemic, around the loss of so much that we love and still striving, still working for justice, still working for the safety and well-being of our families and our children in terms of their physical health, as well as their education, you know, there are just so many things right now that make, as you said, um, this theme like that brings to life in full color and four dimensions. Yeah, this is the um, this is the wilderness. And there's lots of different pieces we can discuss about that around how to advance racial justice. But I wonder, particularly in light of all that's happening with the election coming up with a lot of fear and pressure and tension swirling, I think it's all the more important that we lift up and regularly practice gratitude and appreciation. Uh, for what we do have, for what can never be taken from us. Um, yeah. And, and gratitude both in general and also specifically in the context of, of work to advance racial justice. It's so easy to focus on what's not going well. And I am, what I'm saying is not about at all. Let me clarify for a second, is not at all about sugarcoating hurtful things or ignoring or ignoring painful things or, or injustice. Um, but it's holding the sacred, powerful, both and. Uh, there is injustice and there is still so much that we can appreciate and be grateful for around efforts that we are making and progress that we are making. And we still have a long way to go, but that long way is only going to get there if we continue to take those steps over and over and over again and begin to make leaps and get a running pace. And a number of us, depending upon our identity, depending upon how long we've been in this work, whether we're brand new or we've been in it for decades, we're moving at different paces. It takes time to build momentum. But I think as we work toward racial justice and collective liberation in the context of being deeply immersed in wilderness. Um, gratitude is important. And so maybe when I want, I want to hear any reflections you have Tracy, but maybe we can think about or toss out ideas around things, particularly during particularly, especially during particularly rough moments. Um, to hold while we're navigating certain difficulties, things we can be profoundly grateful of and grateful for. What's coming up for me um, in what you're saying is, I think I told you recently about my experience. I was do I was being in a guided meditation about the Mishkan, which is the tabernacle. So it was the temple before there was a temple in the wilderness, and um, the 
in the guided meditation, the rabbi suggested that we imagine ourselves in the presence of this skin color, skin covered, excuse me, you know, animal skin covered structure and imagine the Holy of Holies in there and that there's a light emanating from that Holy of Holies, the holiest place on earth, he said. And I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the light. But then when I looked down, I felt, I saw a light emanating from me. And at first I was like, oh, that, that's not what he said. That doesn't seem right. But then when I looked around in my sort of meditative world, there was a, a whole bunch of people, dozens, hundreds of people in this space. And all of our chests were sort of glowing with this light, this divine light. And I realized that it's in us and that together we build the Mishkan. And I'm saying this after you're talking about gratitude in, in, the, in this time of wilderness, because for me, that connection that you and I have, or that I have with my partners here in Baltimore, or that I have with people who I don't even know across um, Facebook or in something that they've written, or Chadwick Boseman and, and what he you know embodied and, and gave to the world, that there's, there's, there's a connection there and it's real and it's divine. And it is how we build the space. The Mishkan is the place that God asked us to build so that God could dwell among us. And so it is the way that God enters the world. And I'm so grateful for that. And that's what's coming up for me when you're talking about being grateful for what we have without sugarcoating what is not as God intended. Mm -hmm. Or emotional or spiritual bypassing. This yeah. is more about a holistic approach that I struggled with initially when I learned about some of these things because it seemed like emotional bypassing, but eventually I realized personally for me that I need that balance, that even in the worst of circumstances, I need to hold and remember that the sun is still rising and that babies are being born and various people are having dreams come true. And that doesn't shift whatever tragedy I'm facing or whatever big issue I'm dealing with. But I also don't let that thing let me lose sight of our collective progress, of all that we do have available to us, of the opportunities that still abound and that I may need time to take a break and heal and rest you know, I once heard an artist say, justice has different hats for different days. And I live into that wisdom and knowing that at times it looks like um, me being out in the streets and other times it looks like me supporting some of my friends and fellow colleagues in thriving in their roles. And other times it, you know, it manifests in all different, and, to, and at times it manifests in me saying, I need to take a break for six months and I need to do work. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do event planning for a little bit and take a break from my leadership and movement building so that I can rest and recalibrate and heal from hurts that happened. Um, and it's funny because you said exactly what I wrote down <laughs> before you said it. I wrote down in terms of things to really focus on. I wrote down on our connections and relationships. Um, I know that I've been really missing people lately and I called my mother last night and was on the phone with her for almost an hour and a half. And it's very unusual for us. Normally our conversations are always intense. Um, one, my family just navigates a lot of intense adversity. Um, my immediate family back home um, with grace and, and very well. But, um, and also then we're also very deeply passionate about politics and identity and movements. And so there's always some permutation of a meeting we were in. And then we both take different sides at times for the sake of heaven or, well, that's a good point, April, but have you considered, or that's a good point, mom, but have you, um, but this conversation was pretty dull. I didn't have anything new to say. I just, but I'm just missing people right now, you know, and we were just, I just, I woke up feeling like I just needed to be there with her and which isn't normal for us. We're normally like super, <laughs> like imagine our conversation times like five or something, <laughs> you know, um, she's like a mom, a master coach, a movement organized, all these things rolled up in, in one. 
<laughs> she keeps me honest um, and supported. And so, and then what I would add to that list, I think is also our inspired by what you shared in terms of your reflections about the Mishkan, which is can nicely tie into themes around the sukkah and um, all kinds of meaning that we could get into about all of the um, mystical and metaphorical nuances of the sukkah. But one of the pieces that I like about it is that it could be um, representative of, of the um, sukkah or mishkan or holy space within each of us that we cultivate and hold and cherish, whether it's our spirit, our, you know, our ruach, our spirit, our neshama, um, but also our actual body um, and, and whatever state of, of health or occasional dis-ease or regular dis-ease our body is in, that it is our own. Um, and to hold that sacred sovereignty while also holding that we're in community and we can't do this alone, but there also is um, immense wisdom and strength that each of our bodies hold and own, whether again, we're in vital, vibrant health or navigating discomfort and dis-ease intensely or anywhere in the middle along that continuum, um, that our body is ours. And that's a place that we can return to when we need it um, while navigating while navigating this um, bummy bar, this wilderness. I think the last thing for me that I would name here that's very important to me, both pragmatically and spiritually, is vision. I believe that vision is very powerful. I believe that vision combined with mindful, thoughtful action is more powerful than reality. Getting, I'm getting a little mm-hmm. intense, you know, but um, our reality is just a result of what's happened in the past. And in my own life, I've seen the progress that I've been, been able to make individually as well as collectively in deep part- partnership with allies and friends when we weren't limited by reality, but we said, what do we actually want to envision and begin to build into existence? And, mm-hmm. and that isn't always the thing to do during, um, while we're in the midst of Bamid Bar. Um, but I believe that Sukkot provides this um, Sukkot Shalom, this shelter of peace that provides connection and opportunities for us to turn inward as well as savor sweetness, savor the different species, savor the scent of the etrog, the etrog and the sounds of the reeds and the other components of the lulav. And in doing that, it both giving us comfort in the present moment and gratitude for the people around us and ourselves, but also can be a respite in a moment for us um, to not lose sight of our vision. And even if we're in a place where we can't take action on it now, because we're just trying to get through that a core part of what has helped my family get through adversity and what has consistently helped me not only survive adversity, but consistently surmount it and move forward is holding on to the beauty of my dreams and, and using those dreams to help comfort me in moments of, of pain and disillusionment um, when the wilderness gets a bit too rough. So I think those are, are three things I would say. Is there anything else that you want to add, Tracy? I, I just want to appreciate all that you said. I'm thinking about the that's going to stay with me for a while thinking about the Sukkot Shalom that's inside and how we make our, you know, how we make our bodies and, and even I'm going to be teasing us out over the next several days. I'm sure the metaphor of that, that three, that building that actually has 
re- required one side open um, and how mm. there's comfort, but what we're required to not close ourselves off. Um, yeah. So, and may I add to thank that you actually? For that. And thank you. And what I would add to what you said, right? Because that's actually one, because there's so many parts of it. So, I, but right. So that one of the regulations of building a sukkah is that one side is open, but the other part of that means is that three are closed. Right. And that hy- hypothetically, you know, we're both two Brene Brown fans. Maybe she'll be on the show sometime in the future. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, is like, is that you know, she talks about something along the lines of like hard back, soft heart, that you yes. can apply that, you can transpose that with the sukha, that you're meant to keep one side open, but there are three sides that are just for you and your sacred community, and that there's room for people to come in and out, but that there's, it has a lot of personal meaning for me, you know, this theme of sovereignty, um, and that that we have three other Walls and it also applies to the the some of the components of feng shui that I've been a student of for a long time of having the hard shell back to make sure that your back space is protected and that you're able to have vision, but that also you have a container to hold yourself and a container in which something sweet and nourishing can be cultivated and your own while also being open to sharing and giving and venturing out. So thank you for that. Um, Any final, final thoughts? No, just to wish you a uh, happy Sukkot, Sukkot Sameach. Thank you. Likewise, Chag Sameach, Sukkot Sameach, and Sukkot Sameach to all of you. May... You have a wonderfully joyous time in a sukkah. And if a sukkah is not fully available to you, like one may not be available to me in Dakar this year, particularly with the pandemic, um, maybe find ways of savoring sweetness and noticing other harvests that are coming in at this time for us. Um, whatever they may be in whatever form they may take. So Sukhat Sameach, uh, sending love to all y'all and to you, Tracy. <laughs> all right, bye. Thanks for tuning in. Our show's theme music was composed by Elliot Hammer. You can find this track and other beats on Instagram at Elliot Hammer. If this episode resonated with you, please share it and subscribe. To join the conversation, visit JewsTalkRacialJustice.com, where you can send us a question or suggestion, access our show notes, and learn more about our team. Take care until next time and stay humble and keep going.